Good morning, Mount Royal locals. Today, we're bringing you a story about jock itch. Yes, itchy crushes. The medical term is tinea cruris. It's a fungal infection similar to athlete's foot, found mostly in adult and adolescent males. Today, we'll be following the story of a local here, Jeff, starting with his first visit to the doctor's office. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Oh, I've been better. Can you tell me what kind of symptoms you're having? Well, I've got this raised rash on the inside of my upper thighs. Oh, gotcha. Itchy, I assume? Yeah, it's very painful. Uh, it's red scaly patches on the skin? Yeah. Uh, reddish brown color? Mm hmm. Does the rash have a pretty sharply defined border? Oh, there's definitely a distinct border. <laughs> uh, okay. Sounds like it might be jock itch. Jock itch? Doesn't that mean that only athletes can get it? Uh, not always. It's more common in male athletes, hence the name, but non athletes and even women can get it. Uh, the fungus thrives in moist, warm areas and can be triggered by wetness in the area, such as from sweating or friction from clothes. Oh, is it serious, doctor? Be straight with me. Are we gonna have to amputate? No, not at all. It's very easy to treat. Oh, good. Now that we have Jeff's diagnosis, he went to a professor of microbiology to learn more. Hopefully the microbiology professor is more of a fun guy than the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Jeff. Professor Maibai! Professor Maibai! Professor Maibai! Come in! I just got back from the doctor and they had some pretty bad news. They said that I have jock itch and I don't know what I'm going to do about it. So maybe if you could shed some light, that would just be so great. Oh, that's really sad, Jeff. Just take a seat, we'll talk about it. Okay, thank you. Well, a number of little critters called dermatophytes could be to blame for this. For example, Epidermophyton flocosum. Okay. Trichophyton rubrum. Or Trichophyton mentigrophytes. All of these critters look pretty scary, but don't worry about it. It's not that bad. That doesn't sound too good, Doc. What are these things going to do to me? Well, these guys usually stay on the surface of the skin, the epidermis but they can use finger-like projections to dig deep into this skin. And from there, they secrete proteases and keratolytic substances to penetrate. It's all quite fascinating. Fascinating to you. Terrifying for me. Where do you think I could have gotten this? Well, it might be a good idea to retrace your steps. See what went wrong from there. Yeah, okay. Maybe I should do that. Thanks a lot, Professor. No problem. Sharing towels. Hey, can I borrow that towel? Oh man, this is still wet! Or sharing cups. Hey, are you gonna hollow those cups or share? There's a cup. Not that sort of cup. I mean an athletic protective cup. Poor hygiene. When was the last time you showered? Um... A couple weeks ago, midterms have been super stressful and I haven't had a chance to get home. But I'd be willing to take a break if you are. Gross. You can say that again. Also, if you have athlete's foot, the infection can be transferred from foot to groin through unwashed clothing. Hey man, can I borrow those sweatpants? Sure, they're a bit dirty though. Um, yeah, whatever. Oh, thank you. Hey, Professor Contagion, I've recently been told that I have a bad case of jock itch, and I was really hoping I didn't have to take any drugs because I lost both of my kidneys and half of my liver to a freak jaguar attack in Taiwan. Is there any way my body's going to be able to get rid of this thing on its own? Well, it's really hard to say. It depends how bad the infection is. Usually it can stay on the superficial layers of the skin, and increased desquamation can get rid of it. Desquamation? It just means increased shedding of the skin. Maybe if you tell me about your symptoms, I can determine the severity of the situation. I've got some redness, some swelling, some itching, some warm, tingly feeling down there. You just described the classic signs of inflammation. Well, what's happening now is your innate immune system is at work. Since the pathogen is on the surface of the skin, it's triggering leukocytes and mast cells to the scene. However, 
In some cases, these dermatophytes have things called manins, which actually bind to macrophages, preventing a lymphoproliferative response or a specific immune response. It might be a good idea to go talk to your pharmacist. Yeah, uh, it sounds like that is indeed the case. I think I might do that. Uh, you know, see you in class, Professor Contagion. Take care, Jeff. by the government and in no way, shape, or form benefits from the mass exploitation of humanity by pharmaceutical companies. I was wondering if you could possibly help me with my, you know, itch down well, there. Well, we can definitely help you with the itch down there. I can give you something called an antifungal. Uh -huh. And one of the drugs that are antifungals are benzylamines. And that will actually help you reduce inflammation that you have down there. Well, these work by acting on mast cells. Okay. I'm sure there's some doctors that have taught you about massive in the past, right? Yeah. Have you heard of this before? But how do I use these antifungals? Well, you use them, I can give you a pill form, or I can give you a topical cream. Now, the topical cream, you apply there once or twice a day, right? You'll get cured pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay, but what if I'm not super healthy, like I've had some medical issues in the past? Uh, say I'm not like a really good example of a fit little 20-something year old guy. Well, what would you suggest? Well, I would suggest you take the pill form because the pill form will help you with treating the inflammation quicker than applying topical cream. Because obviously, if you have all those issues, topical cream might not be as effective. Okay. Are there any home remedies or anything that I could just whip up without having to, you know, because I'm an American citizen, spend all my money here at the pharmacy? Well, there definitely are home remedies that you can use, but they aren't as effective as using the actual medication. Um, you can use baby oils, or you can go home and take some vinegar, dilute it in water. Also, you can, what you can do is take some bleach, dilute that in water as well. Make sure you dilute it, otherwise you're gonna burn down there. Um, the other thing is go on the internet, search it up. You know, if you don't wanna use medications, it's always good to go on the internet and find something, right? Yeah, sure. Yep. Thank you. None of those really seem too uh, comfortable, but if you could just open this up for me yeah. and then, you know, come on in. I'll... So now that we know about the treatment of jock itch, what are some ways to prevent it in the first place? Well, you know, having a shower after extensive workout could really help reduce that. And clean clothing really helps too. Yeah, make sure you wear shoes if you're walking around in public places, public gyms. <laughs> those are so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and using mild soaps and laundry detergents to reduce irritation in the area. Yes, without too much vinegar, because that would probably burn a lot. <laughs> so thanks for listening. And tune in next week for our special on STIs, infections of the nether regions. <laughs>